Hi, Michelle here from Happy Scrap Girl Designs. I am stuck here in the snow and cold, and I am dreaming of spring. And I ran across some starburst patterns the other day, and it made me think of spring. So today, I'm going to teach you three ways to make a starburst pattern. Okay, so the first way we're going to make a starburst pattern is in Photoshop. And we're going to open up a document, uh, make it the same size as you want your paper. Click U on your keyboard or come over here to the rectangle tool. Oh, no, I was clicking. There we go. Rectangle tool. And I made my rectangle one inch wide um, and a little bit longer than the paper. And I put a fill. I made mine black. You can make it any color you'd like and no stroke. Then we are going to duplicate this as many times as you would like. I'm going to duplicate it five times. Three, four, five. And then I'm going to take the top one right here and I'm going to move it over so it's about a half an inch from the other edge. Okay, and now I'm going to, whoops, my mouse is being a little funky here today. I'm going to select the top layer and hold shift and select the bottom layer. Push V on my keyboard for the, the move tool and we're going to distribute the left edges here so that they're all spread out evenly across the page. Now with them still selected, hit Control E on your keyboard to merge them all together. Right click and raster rasterize the layer. And then we want to go to filter, <coughs> excuse me, distort polar coordinates. You want to choose rectangular to polar and click OK. And here you have a starburst shape. It's a little bit smaller than your paper, so we're going to zoom out a little bit. Controls minus. And I'm actually going to make this, let's see if it'll let me make it a smart object. And then I'm just going to hold down the shift key so that it keeps the proportions, and I'm going to make it larger and then zoom back in and try to center it here so it's right in the middle. Click enter and there's a quick and easy starburst pattern in Photoshop. Okay, the next way that I'm going to show you how to make a starburst pattern is in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to open up a new document the same size as you would like your paper to be, so 12 inches by 12 inches, and make sure it's at 300 ppi. And here's our artboard, and I like to have my rulers and my grid on. So I'm going to turn those on, control R and control apostrophe. And then I'm going to go and turn on snap to grid. Choose my rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna going to draw a rectangle and snap it to the artboard. And I'm going to have, I'm just going to put a light color back here so you can see it. It doesn't really matter what color or stroke you have here. And then I'm going to take the ellipse tool and I'm going to make a circle. <clears throat> I'm going to hold down the, art, the Alt key and click on my keyboard and it'll bring this pop-up box and I'm going to make my circle 10 inches around. Hit OK and I'm going to change this fill color to black just so you can see it easier and I'm going to keep the stroke on black. Actually, I'm going to change my fill color to none, and I'm going to have the stroke be black. Next, I'm going to align it to my artboard. So if you click over here and align to artboard, and I just want to center the circle on my artboard. 
the next thing I want to do is I want to increase my stroke size so that the whole stroke goes all the way to the center of the circle. And I've done this before, and so I'm going to tell you with a 10 inch circle, you want your stroke to be 720 pixels. Yes, that's huge. The next thing you're going to do is go to Window, Stroke, and make sure you have up your Stroke panel. Mine's already open, so I don't need to click it. If yours isn't open, please do open it. And it's over here. And see, it shows you the weight of your stroke is 720 pixels. And over here is a box for dashed lines. And we're going to check this. And I believe the default here is like 12 pixels and zero, which makes it kind of crazy. But you can play with this. And I thought that this looked really fun to set it to 100 for the dash and 50 for the gap. It makes nice, evenly spaced rays on our starburst. You can make them uneven. You can make different sizes. So I could do 100 point um, dashed lines and then do like a 50 next to it so that there's nice wide ones here and narrow ones next to it. I can change the spacing in between them. So you can get all different kinds of looks with this. I'm going to delete that. Okay, and I really like it like this. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is once you make sure you have your circle selected here. And if your circle is not selected, you can go right over here in the layers panel and show both of your layers and make sure that you can click right over here to select the, sh this little square here shows that the circle layer is currently selected. Go to Object, Arrange, and move the circle to the back, send to back. With your Move tool selected, select both layers by just making a big square over them. And we're going to go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. This will make your starburst fit the paper shape perfectly without having overlap on your page. So it'll be a little bit easier to move into Photoshop. Then go to Object, Expand, hit OK for Fill and Stroke. Go to your Pathfinder menu, and you want to select Intersect. And that will make this so that it's all just one layer. And you can now go to Edit, Copy, and you can take it right over into Photoshop. Have Open your new document that's your size of your paper and Control V to paste it right in as a smart object and it will fit perfectly. Okay, the third way to make a starburst tool, again, a starburst pattern, sorry, again, is in Illustrator. And I have a new um, document open here and I'm going to zoom out a little bit on my artboard. Control minus so that I can see a little bit beyond it. I'm going to select my pen tool and then I'm going to draw a triangle shape here. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click in the center and when I hover over the center, I don't know if you can see that there in teeny tiny little green letters it says center when I'm hovering over the middle. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to bring it back up to make my triangle shape and then complete it by clicking on the first um, anchor point. I'm going to select my move tool and select the whole shape. And I actually want it to be a nice pretty blue color. And now I'm going to take the Rotate tool, R on the keyboard, and I'm going to hover over the this anchor point, which is in the center of our document. And I'm going to hold down Alt 
and click on the anchor point. I'm going to type in 360 because there's 360 degrees in a circle divided by however many rays I would like in my starburst and I'm going to choose 10 or choose 8 for this and I'm going to click copy and it will make one copy of my ray that is 360 divided by 8 degrees past the first one. It's great that Illustrator will do some math for us. Then before I do anything else, don't click on anything else, don't touch anything else, hit hold down the control and push D on your keyboard and keep doing that until you get all eight of your rays for your starburst. Now the fun thing about doing it like this is you can choose to just select one of the rays and you can change the color and you can have a couple different colors here in your starburst or you can undo that and you can select all of them and choose your rotate tool again select in the center again I think that's the center hold down the alt key and um, you can do 360 divided by 16 double whatever number you had and copy it and it will make another set of rays and we can change all of those to a different color so you can have twice as many rays that way you can then do the same thing we did before where we put a square behind this and um, the clipping mask to cut these into just a square and take them over to Photoshop so they're quick and easy to use Okay, that was three ways to make a starburst pattern. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you have any questions, please contact me at happyscrapgirl at live.com. Have a wonderful day.